So we are going to do a season outlook for the Philadelphia 76ers. Yes, um, Trav, how do you feel about the Sixers? Before we get into any detail or anything like that, a lot of people are scrutinizing the, the pairing of Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, saying that it can't work. They're trying to blow it up. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's stupid as fuck. <clears throat> Neither one of them are in their primes. So you can't say that they won't work together, but they also have to give them a fighting chance to work together. You can't just both tell them to go do what they do and without having a plan. Like there's just, it just feels like that team was never built the right way. <coughs> so if you can get the right pieces around them, then I don't think there's a reason to blow it up. Ben Simmons is a generational <coughs> talent. Joel Embiid, fucking no injuries he's also a generational talent so like you don't pass those up and on top of that you have those two guys are top seven or eight defensive players in the league exactly. you know and they're both big guys you have two people that are damn near seven foot each that can completely shut teams down on defense you don't get rid of that and like you said you don't blow it up before it has a chance how many healthy seasons have these guys had together they're both like 25, 24. They're young. You know, how many how many years did it take for Shaq and Kobe to win a championship? They were, you know, getting bounced in the first round. Kobe jacking up air balls. You need to give it time. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying is you don't blow up the superstar part of your team that early, especially yeah. when it's two young guys you drafted. You, you fucking make sure you tried everything before mm -hmm. you get rid of them. Yeah, you exhaust all possibilities before you even consider giving them up. Because like you said, they drafted them. Those are their homegrown talented guys. Don't, that's their baby. You don't sell your baby. Yeah, I think people are freaking insane to say that Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid can't play together. I think all that needs to happen is one of them needs to buy into the other one. Personally, I think they need to give Ben Simmons the reins of the team. I think he should be controlling the ball. I think he should be calling the plays. Joel Embiid still being a big portion of offense, obviously, but letting Joel Embiid in, or Ben Simmons initiate Joel Embiid instead mm -hmm. of trying to force Joel Embiid in. He's taking fucking 10 threes in the game. He should never take more than three threes. In Unless he's game. hot. And let, even then, it's like, bro, so you shouldn't even be out there that much, in my opinion. But that's just me. I still think Ben Simmons should be the definitive guy on that team. So that way, it kind of make it gives you a plan. It mm -hmm. gives you what to go off. Yeah. Even with the Lakers, LeBron's the guy, no matter how good AD is. And that LeBron's just... the guy until so LeBron's not the guy. Yeah. One thing that I do like that the Sixers did is bring in Doc Rivers. I'm not a big fan of Doc Rivers per se, but he has a lot of experience with big star talent. And he has proven that he can make a lot of talented guys work together. Then it, buy into a system, buy into a plan like you're referring to. And just getting a different – it's going to give them a different outlook. They they were running with uh, – I forget their old head coach's name. Nobody knows their old head coach's name. But he was name. there for a long time. So now they're finally going to get just a different outlook. And then if you look at the team that they started building this year, though, it makes more sense getting Seth Curry on that team, who's <clears throat> a fucking – One shit. of the best shooters in the league. The guy is averaging for his career, what, 43% from three? So when you have him sitting in a corner or running around the perimeter with Ben Simmons, breaking guys down off the dribble, taking it to the lane and kicking it out, he, you're going to have a guy that if he's open, he's making it, period. And That's what Seth Curry does. It's, you know, Tobias Harris. <clears throat> I seen something where it was Doc Rivers was saying that he felt like he was dribbling the ball too much not having quick enough decision making and stuff and they want to fix that and i remember watching a lot of games and it was kind of like why does tobias harris have the ball this much and let's be honest why <coughs> i feel like people are giving tobias harris too much clout well what why did he get such a big contract because hey but who who was coaching him when he was playing at his best that got him that contract doc rivers mm -hmm. he was playing for the clippers not to say it's that, but Doc Rivers could possibly be the person that's always going to get the best out of him. 
Mm-hmm. So it's interesting to see what he's going to do with him in the in for the 76ers because he's already had success with this player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whereas you could say his 76ers career, he hasn't been successful. On paper, though, that's a, he's a great pickup because, yeah, he's not. He's a good player. I just don't think he fits the value of the contract that he got. Hey, but, but that's... hey, respect to him. Get your money. I'm not hating at all. But I just think that that max, quote unquote, max in the NBA is insane. You have average and above average players damn near getting max contracts just, you know, so as teams can keep them. But, you know, that's kudos to the NBA and the NBA players organization because they made that happen. They did pay they yeah. their money. All right. So let's, let's break this team down, man. Let's start with the starting five. Uh, I'm assuming Ben Simmons is going to continue to play the one, even if we don't have to specifically label the one through five positions, because NBA th- uh, these days well, we can say it's positionless. If anything, it's point guard and then the rest. Yeah, point guard and a rest. But you the got point Ben guard Simmons. Isn't always going to be the little guy. It's yeah, it's ben Simmons. ben Simmons, LeBron. It's the guy that has the ball in their hands the most. That's initiating the offense, getting guys in a position where they where they need to be. And basically running the team, you know, you have a lot of a lot of solid point guards that were not stars, you know, that was doing that. Derek Fisher for the Lakers, you know, especially in the in Kobe's second run for the two titles with Powell. Derek Fisher was bringing the ball up, getting guys in a position. And I'm not going to say Derek Fisher is a superstar. He's a very good role player, you know, mad respect to Derek Fisher. <laughs> Lakers all day, baby. But um yeah, but in, in the Sixers position or situation, Ben Simmons is a superstar, and he's holding the ball. And I agree with you. I think you need to let Ben Simmons have the reins and see what happens. Uh, Joel Embiid, you had it. You fumbled it. Now it's it's only respect to give Ben Simmons that chance because well, he is such an extreme talent. And in my opinion, though, too, you can be a very great center, but you – you need somebody to 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 be there that's helping you though. Yeah, you're, you're as that in that position, it just doesn't make sense for you to be. Shaq never that. won without an extremely talented and guard. He's not gonna like Joel Embiid will be at his full potential playing off the ball, and then so I think that's gonna make a lot of sense. And then it, who would you say the two necessarily? Maybe because it's Danny gonna be Danny Green. Green. So Danny. Green. So Danny Green could play a, a smaller small forward. Uh, maybe you know take the guy's wing player um but i feel like he two three it doesn't matter who are the other two guys i think it could be seth it could be uh, i i believe danny green will be in the starting lineup for sure i think they want to put seth and danny green in the starting lineup when you get back to it i mean Ben Simmons is really tall. <clears throat> Danny Green can guard. Okay, that three. that makes sense. And they're trying so, to space and then have Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and then Tobias, Tobias Harris. Harris to space. Yeah, Spacing. all of those guys could shoot. Joel Embiid, he could shoot a little bit. So that means you have Ben Simmons, who's a freight train, LeBron-esque, coming down the lane. He's very agile. He's a big body. He's like 6'10", 240. Big-ass dude. And he could jump out the building. So if you could get him in one-on-one positions, nine times out of ten, he's, he's going to score a gift out. Every time, probably. So that's what I'm assuming they're going to go for. But who knows? <clears throat> All right, now let's break it down even more. So <clears throat> you know what you're getting out of Ben Simmons. You know what you're getting out of Joel Embiid. The other three guys, what are you expecting from Tobias Harris? He is the definitive third option on this team. See, one is I don't know if you know what you're going to get out of Ben Simmons yet because they could use Ben Simmons a lot of ways. And for all we know, he could come out next year and he could be shooting. There's literally a part of his game he hasn't tapped into yet because he hasn't had to and he just hasn't. So if he just starts shooting from a little bit further out, then you're getting a whole new player, a whole new dynamic. Well, I mean, but you you could say that about anybody, you know what I'm saying? Giannis, if he shoots 35% from three, he's averaging 40. Yeah, but I don't, you know what I mean. But yeah, I feel you. 
Yeah, ben Simmons does because that. he understands, hey, I have to take these make or miss so, because it's going to open up the rest of my game. With that being said, you know, you, yeah, you're going to get that out of Ben Simmons. Joel Embiid, you're going to get 25 and 13 out of that motherfucker. And great defense from both of them. So, Tobias Harris, you don't – you just need to you just need to him yeah need him to just play his role. If there's a night where Ben Simmons is not playing good or Joel Embiid isn't, he needs to be the one. It's not like I feel like he played in his head a lot because people kind of like play up this third option shit. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's really a third option. It's just you need to have it like it takes an army. And, <clears throat> and- My idea of a third option is if Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons are not getting it done, this guy needs to step up. We're not asking you to step up every single game because, you know, most games, those two are going to get you the win. But if they're just not having it, my idea of a third option is this guy is stepping up every single time. And I could get that, but it's I don't know. I think because if you in my personal opinion, then you could let a lot of people green like have the green light and they could be a third option that night. Joel and beats hurt. Dwight could go out there and get you 25 and fucking nine. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Out of athleticism, just dunking. <clears throat> and he can do that. So it's like. But you want to say he's, option that night. he's just a guy that got hot. Seth Curry, though, he's another guy that could. That's what I'm saying is it takes. I think Seth I think Curry is a really good role player. And I think he will give them like 13, 13 a night, 12 a night. So Tobias Harris, though, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. He needs obviously he needs to be like an eighteen guy, eighteen maybe for now. Yeah, because Ben Simmons isn't going to give you twenty, but twenty five. You eleven assists. So yeah, exactly. So I'm saying for like most third options, they give you fifteen points a night. That's solid, you know. But because this specific team's second option is not a scorer per se, that third option is going to have more opportunities to shoot because, like you said, the assists are high. He's passing the ball. It's just, this is definitely a hard team to do, though, because it's like there's a lot of new factors. Health is big, too. Yeah. We're, these outlooks are assuming these guys are going to be relatively healthy. We're going to be optimistic and hope for, for the sure. best. But then it's crazy, too, because, it, again, they do have a whole new, like, coaching staff down there now, so we're going to see a different 76 <coughs> team. Yeah, new system. And it, we haven't seen that because it's been the same that same white dude with the beard. I don't know his name. It's been him for a long time, though. And, yeah. I hope that I hope they play good, though. I like that team. I like Ben Simmons yeah, the, a lot. The thing that I like that they did was they got rid of Al Horford. He just wasn't fitting down there. That never made Because sense. I think Al – yeah, they got him, I, I believe, specifically to match up with Giannis. Because in my opinion, if it comes down to that, Joel Embiid and Dwight Howard could give Giannis fits, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. And you got Dwight for the minimum. Dwight Howard was a steal, man. People, like, unless you watched a lot of Laker games, you don't understand what Dwight Howard did. He may give you five and six, but his physicality and the way he just made a statement yeah, every yeah. single time he was in the game. Like, it impressed me. When it he, really did. When he went in, you know, the other center was like, oh, fuck. Here comes Dwight. So Because he's going to he's gonna fuck you up. He's going to foul you hard. He's going to put his body on you. He, and the dude's a wrecking ball. And Joel Embiid does the same thing in a different way. Mm-hmm. And he gets in people's heads. And he's really fucking skillful in the post, man. He has a lot of moves down there. A lot this, of those little hooks. This team? Bullshit that he does. Yeah. Is, no, he's very, very skillful. Uh, very, very skillful because post you player. Run a big, you couldn't fucking put Dwight in at the five and run Joel and beat at the four. And Ben Simmons at the one. That's so, that's ridiculous. Like nobody's scoring. And they then you put be, and then you put Thibault in there, who's I said a pest. This dude is amazing on defense. And Danny Green, who's scoring on that? Like, if you're having a game, that's what we talk about all the time with the Lakers of uh, uh, last season. There were games where we just could not score, but we weren't let the other yeah, team we score like, either. <laughs> there was very few games where the Lakers just got their ass whooped. It was very impressive. And, uh, and this 76ers team, I feel like they could be they scary could be on defense. Yeah. Scary. And the thing is, too, is 
in my opinion, I don't think that the Bucks made enough of a roster change to make a difference to their team right now. Mm-hmm. So I think a solid defensive team is all you need against the Bucks because all you have is Giannis. I think that's why Giannis is coming out saying he doesn't mind being a different option. Yeah, he's saying, look, I need help. Because, Give me some firepower. Because, yeah, it's like <clears throat> that shit only works so much. I'm big and I could dunk. Like, okay. I think Giannis is out, bro. I know there's rumors about him potentially signing a max, but I don't think he has they had their chance it. and they blew it. Here's my thing is, is if he had 100% faith in that roster, that max would have been signed. Yes. Fast. yes. It would have already been signed. And, and, and with them fumbling that, that, that trade with the Kings, that, that looks bad. Everything. That looks because bad. He said he wanted him. Yeah. He specifically and it was a steal, too. They guy. traded scrubs for him. He specifically was like, I want him. He's a dog, like something like that. They're both European. They, yeah. they, they, he wanted to play Respect. with him. Yeah. And yeah, bro. So he's like, all right. We'll, now I we'll do an uh, outlook on the Bucks. Um, make sure we get that out there for the fans. But um, back to the Sixers, man. Where can you see this team falling in the playoffs? Let me say this. All name teams. You tell me if you think the Sixers are going to be better or worse than that team, the Bucks. Worse. The Heat. Worse. The Raptors. Better. Um, the Pacers. Better. I'm missing uh, the Celtics. Better. I basically have an mm. idea of what I think the East is going to be. So I think they're going to sit right there at three. At three. Yeah. I can see that. If they're healthy, I like this team, man. A lot of defense, a lot of shooting. Uh, they're going to open things up. You got a very experienced coach and in Doc you Rivers. Have two guys that could be top 10 players in the league if they're yes. unlocked the right way. Yes. And they're healthy. And I'm pretty sure they're tired of losing and under performing mm -hmm. at this point because they know like all right they're not they're not the young guys anymore that are good they're they should have the experience yes they should they've be been here long enough body so it, it's up to that it's up to them really how bad do they want change. it yes and changing their game and we'll, we'll see if they have that if they do that because <clears throat> that's going to be a big difference ben simmons taking shots joel and turning his ego down in my opinion some and letting Ben Simmons be the guy that controls it and Joel Embiid playing that five that big guy position and doing what he does best you know what I mean and not getting yeah. to trying to play hero ball I would say because I, I feel like he does that I see him go down just shoot a three like pull up a three 18 seconds on the shot clock and it's like there he shouldn't do that you know what i'm saying that doesn't make any sense yeah too much doing a little bit too much i remember not to always go back to the lakers but i remember it was a game i think we're getting our ass beat and ad wasn't ever wasn't getting the ball and he literally called for it and took it down court and then lost it did yeah. some stupid shit yeah. and then after that i feel like our guys like rondo the vets were like hey relax don't do that that's not going to get us to win. Yeah. And sometimes there's nobody. I feel like there's nobody telling Joel Embiid that. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I feel like there's some shit that he does where it's like, come on, bro. Let well, you got some vets over there, though, that should say some stuff. Danny Green, bro. He, now, yeah. He's won championships with three teams. He has that experience. He's performed, you know, for the mistakes that he made in the or I'm not even going to say mistakes. Danny Green was great last season. He just couldn't shoot. Yeah, he couldn't he does, shoot shit. He's going to do the same thing he did for sure last season. And if he's not, if he's he making, will shoot better. So he's going to be a big, uh, a he's going to be a big player. asset. So I don't know. I have them winning. I don't know really how many games. I think that doesn't. It's really weird. Matter. 72 games. It, 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 it's, it's weird putting a. A win loss projection because of the reduced season. At, I feel like I, I'm saying three, like firm. Yeah, I think they're Probably getting like about 50, 50 wins, 50 plus. Yeah, depending on just we got to see how the season health. Goes. They got to be healthy. I have faith, all the faith in the world that Doc Rivers is going to make them a really good regular season team. Yeah. <laughs>
but we'll, we'll just see. We have to see what it translates to. I'm excited to watch them. That's the team. I'm I was a big fan of them last season when they went down with the injuries. I was I was a little hurt. Yeah. You know, I'm a Laker guy, but I I enjoy basketball. I'm a basketball fan, and I really like that team. I I'm a big fan of Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. I really believe that they can make it happen. They just need some time, man. You have older veteran superstars, you know, some of the greatest players of all time playing right now. Hold on, young bucks, you'll get your <laughs> shot. Let them they'll they're going to be gone eventually. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Don't blow up your shit because you cannot compete with some of the all-time greats. It's okay. Take your time, develop your game, believe in the system, oh, trust the process, and give these guys a chance. Yeah, that's one thing about how everything is now. And I like it. Players take things into their own hands. They like they bounce around. They go where they want to go. But there still should be some sort of, like, building somewhere. And especially if you're right there. And that goes for the teams, too. I feel like people let like almost get bullied into, like, changing up their roster or doing something from social media and shit or fans, like, mm-hmm. into making a hasteful decision, hasty decision whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> so it's like, it's there. They just have to make the right tweak. They could have done it this year. They got the shooting there. They got defense there. They got a guy that could play really good minutes at backup center. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, there you have it, man. Sixers going to be solid. Be brave. Be patient. <laughs> Take your time. Come out kick some ass stay healthy man and the sixers should be pretty good they should be well thanks man thanks for getting on there you have it 2020 2021 philadelphia 76ers season out here we go let's talk smash